of the gospel recorded by Mark. Mark chapter 7 and verse 15. Asking all that can and will stand in reverence to the word of God. I'm good. Amen. If you're there in Mark chapter 7 verse 15. I'm reading from the King James translation. <clears throat> it says, there is nothing that Jesus is saying from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things come out of him those things are they that defile him if any man have ears to hear let him hear and when he was entered to the house from the people his disciples asked him concerning parable and he said unto them are ye so without understanding also do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entering into a man it cannot defile him because it entered not to his heart but into his belly Go without to the drought purging all meat. And then he said, That which cometh out of the man that defileth him. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications murders, thieves, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. I want to talk about the raw materials of sin. The raw materials of sin. You may be seated in the presence of our King. The raw materials of sin. In the tax church, Jesus turns his attention from that of miracles to that of teaching. Jesus focuses on teaching the people. The miracles cannot be understood without the teachings. The Lord has a concern that we learn. He wants to teach us and he wants us to learn. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. This word learn in Matthew is the Greek methano. It means to 
add to what you already have. Jesus wants us to add to his teachings. In other words, every day we must learn more and more about Jesus. I heard somebody say, new mercies I receive every day. We thank God that his concern is to teach us. Here in the text, church, we're dealing with what is called the parable of Corbin or the parable of purification. The word Corbin is a Hebrew word which simply means the pouring of water. It says that in purification, the Lord requires a clean heart. I remember the song we used to sing, give me a clean heart so that I might serve thee. In this parable, the concern here is purification. If you notice that the Pharisees and the scribes from Jerusalem approached Jesus in reference to his disciples not washing their hands before they ate. Again, after Jesus fed 5,000 plus, approximately 15,000 people, the only thing that the Pharisees could see is that they didn't wash their hands. Can I tell you something? You can paint the world gold for some people, and they're going to tell you, you missed a spot. I wish I had somebody up in here. Jesus had just performed a miracle that superseded the natural aspect of life. We do know that miracles are God's way of intervening in what he has already decreed and altering his decree. See, only God can work miracles. Miracles are God's way of speaking to nature and saying to nature, I know I told you to do this, but right now I'm telling you to do this. He spoke to the winds. Winds, I know I have made you to blow. I know that I have made you to keep moving. But now, since I made you, I'm telling you now to be still. See, only God, church, can work miracles. Only God can look at your sick body and tell cancer to stop and be gone. Only God, I wish I had somebody here can look at your weariness in your activities and say to weariness, leave my child alone. So in the text here, Jesus is speaking a parable based upon the complaints of church folk. Oh, Lord have mercy. Can I tell you something about church folk? Church folk ain't never satisfied. They're always looking for something that I could have done. Well, pastor, that was okay, but Jesus is dealing with the religious-minded people of his time in that the Bible says that they came to Jesus Mark tells us 
looking for fault in him. They didn't see the miracle. They were looking for fault. So Jesus, church, takes this as a teaching moment. I wish I had somebody. You know how it is, Coach Mo, when, you, when your players make a mistake, you use that mistake as a teaching moment. Here in the text, Jesus is using the opposition of the Pharisees and the feds from Jerusalem that he may use it as a teaching moment. Are y'all with me? He say, learn of me. And this is what I love about Jesus is that David Michael, even in opposition, he still teaches. You know, I, I want to be like that. I, I want to be like when folk in my face and when folk blessing me good and folk talking about now I want to be able to like Jesus pause and use it as a teaching moment Lord have mercy if we only could understand that most of the challenges that comes our way the Lord wants to use them for a teaching moment. So here in the text, church, the Lord uses this for a teaching moment. He says here to the Pharisees, initially he says that it's not about what goes into a human that defiles the human. It's what comes out of the human that defiles him. Now, it's only befitting that Mark would understand this, being that Mark got his information from Peter. You do remember Peter one afternoon on the housetop, and the Bible says that Peter got real hungry, and the Lord let down a sheet that showed him all animals that were unpure to those Jews. And God told Peter that there is nothing dirty that God had made. I, I'm going to put a pen right there and say it again. There's nobody or nothing dirty, Lord have mercy, that God has made. I think I need to say that again because somebody has said things to you. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody has done some things to you that make you feel dirty and that your life is over. But see, Ephesians tell us that we are God's craftsmanship. Lord have mercy. Lord, <laughs> Ephesians says that we have purpose because God, yeah, in his prophesis, in his purpose, in his pre-thought before he made us, had something in mind for you to be great about. Lord have mercy. See, so there is no such thing as nobody in God's eyesight because everybody is somebody. Now watch the text here. The Bible says that these people came to Jesus and Jesus rebuked them heavily regarding keeping their religious traditions. Lord have mercy. I, I want us to grab this for a second is that there are some things that we traditionally do. And as I said, I, I love some of my African-American cultural traditions. Yeah, there are things that have evolved from our people, and, uh, from enslavement that have come forth through the church and has settled in, Mitch, on 
culture. But the reality is, is that I got to always keep in mind that that has nothing to do with salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these people came to Jesus and say, Jesus, your disciples don't know too much about church. Lord have mercy. They don't know how to say first give them honor to God and they, they don't know all of that. They don't know how to say blessed and highly favored. They, they don't understand the traditions of the church. They, they don't get it. And Jesus rebukes these Pharisees. Uh, are y'all going to let me preach today? By telling them uh, that uh, you serve God with your mouth. Lord have mercy. But not with your heart. Lord have mercy. You see, we're talking about, Lord have mercy. Y'all with me, church? Uh, yeah, we're talking about the place, the raw material of sin. The raw materials of sin. Let me kind of put a pin right here and say that uh, if you were, yeah, standing outside of a, a Ford, yeah, manufacturer, all you would see going in is metal, leather, plastic, iron. That's all you would see going in. But coming out, you'll see a car. Lord have mercy. Yeah, you see the raw material, and it is the raw material that makes up the vehicle. Jesus is talking today about the raw material that makes up sin. I wish y'all were praying with me today. He said here, yeah, Lord have mercy, that after he realized that these Pharisees were not listening, uh, after he realized that they were at a point of no return. Y can I put a pen right there and say, some folk, it doesn't matter how much you try to preach to them, Lord Jesus. You can preach till you're blue in the face. You can preach all day and all night. Uh, but some folk got their mind made up anyhow. Uh, and what Jesus does, he recognizes that these people had gone too far. Just like you taught this morning in Hosea, Mitch, uh, God realized uh, that his people had gone too far. And see, what Jesus does uh, when he realizes that these people had gone too far, uh, Jesus excused himself, Lord have mercy, from that crowd. I, I wish I had somebody up in here. Yeah, Jesus turned from uh, the Pharisees uh, and started to talk to the multitude. Uh, are y'all with me, church? Uh, see, Jesus, church, uh, will excuse himself. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Yeah, we talked about uh, uh, how, yeah, in purpose, uh, how God told Samuel, uh, how long will you mourn for Samuel, seeing that I have excused myself from him? Lord have mercy. Seeing that I have rejected Saul, I should say. Uh, yeah, seeing that I have rejected Saul, God says to Samuel, uh, how long uh, are you going to wait around? Can I tell y'all something? Uh, when the Lord excuse himself, uh, you ought to excuse yourself with him. Lord, I remember, I remember one time uh, we were at Tabernacle and Pastor McCray was in an, in an environment that wasn't conducent to Tabernacle. I think I've done it here in Macedonia. And uh, R.L. just got up and walked out. Uh, but when R.L. walked out, uh, we all put our Baptist finger up uh, 
and we excuse ourselves along with him. Uh, can I tell y'all something? Uh, when Jesus leave, uh, you ought to leave. Lord have mercy. When Jesus, uh, yeah, yeah, leaves the scene, uh, drop the mic, uh, yeah, depart from the building, uh, you ought to put your good old number one up uh, and follow Jesus. Uh, are y'all praying with me today? Uh, see, Jesus excused himself from these people uh, who refused uh, to listen to him. Uh, yeah, one of the challenges uh, of ministry uh, is patience. Lord have mercy. It takes patience uh, in ministry, church, uh, because uh, I don't care who you are. There are times uh, when you're ready to say, uh, can I go on say it? Uh, the hell with these people. Uh, yeah, Lord. Uh, but the reality is, uh, is that God will uh, always make a way. Are y'all praying with me today? Uh, watch what the text says here. The Bible says, uh, yeah, he said in verse 5, the Pharisees said, uh, yeah, why walk not thy disciples uh, according to the tradition uh, of the elders? Uh, but eat bread uh, with unwashed hands. Uh, and when Jesus finished, uh, yeah, his discourse with them, uh, the Bible says uh, in verse 14 uh, that he had called the people unto him. Uh, yeah, see, Jesus had walked away and excused himself from those uh, who didn't want to listen. And he uh, called to him, uh, he called uh, in the imperfect Greek, uh, he kept calling them, uh, the people unto him. Uh, and he said, uh, there's nothing uh, from, uh, nothing uh, from without a man uh, that enter into him, uh, that can defile him. Uh, but the thing uh, which cometh out of him, uh, those things uh, that defile him. Uh, this word defile in the Greek simply means common. Uh, see, one thing uh, that a Jew didn't want to be, uh, and that was common. Uh, Jews always uh, wanted to be separated, uh, yeah, from the crowd. Uh, but the Bible says here, Jesus says, uh, the stuff... Uh, that makes you common uh, is not from uh, the outside. Uh, so what Jesus does here is that he says, uh, can I go on take my time, church? Uh, he says here to the folk uh, who wanted to listen, uh, he said, uh, let me tell you, he brings in the digestive system. Uh, he shows uh, the simplicity of uh, of this parable of purification uh, by bringing in uh, the digestive system. Uh, basically, he says uh, that whatever you eat uh, is going to go in your body. Uh, it's going to go through uh, the digestive system uh, and it's going to come out. Uh, he said, uh, that's not uh, going to make you dirty. Lord have mercy. He says here, yeah, if I can paraphrase, Holly, you may pick up uh, a few germs uh, along the way, uh, but your body will get rid of that stuff. Uh, but then uh, Jesus says, uh, but there's some other stuff, Lord have mercy, that's already in you. Uh, that's the stuff uh, that's defiling you. Now watch it here. Watch one thing about Jesus, church. Uh, we know uh, that he uh, excused himself from the Pharisees, uh, but he also was disappointed in the expectation uh, that he had from his disciples. Uh, watch what he says here in verse, verse 18. Uh, Are ye so without understanding also? Uh, let me pause for a moment, church, uh, and tell you... Uh, that Jesus 
has expectations of you. Lord have mercy. He expect uh, for you uh, to know more than what you know. Uh, he expects uh, for us to understand his teaching. In other words, he says to the disciples here, yeah, you've been with me long enough. You've seen me walk on water. You've seen me raise the dead. You've heard my teachings over and over. You should know what I'm talking about. Uh, can I tell y'all Christians something? Uh, you ought to know what Jesus is talking about. Uh, yeah, you ought to know something uh, that Fox News doesn't know. You should know something uh, that CNN trying to figure out. Uh, Lord, I wish I had somebody. If you've been following uh, Jesus, uh, then uh, you too uh, should understand uh, what's going on in the world. Uh, we shouldn't need uh, the media to interpret uh, what's going on. Uh, and I hear Jesus saying to the church, uh, Lord have mercy, are you so also without understanding? Uh, you ought to know uh, better. You ought to know uh, that judgment uh, starts at the house of mercy. Uh, you should know uh, that uh, sin comes with an expiration date. Uh, I wish I had somebody. Somebody said uh, the wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God is eternal life. Uh, so therefore, uh, sin comes uh, with an expiration date. Uh, and when we look at the world today, uh, we should know uh, that that expiration date uh, is soon uh, on the horizon. Uh, so Jesus has uh, an expectation uh, of the church. But even in the midst uh, of his slightly, yes, yeah, scorning uh, and rebuking uh, the disciples, uh, he, uh, in the midst of his expectation uh, that they should know, uh, he still stopped uh, to explain to them uh, what he was talking about. Uh, now watch what Jesus says here. He says uh, that uh, it's not uh, the thing from uh, without uh, that enters the man, uh, but it cannot defile him uh, because it entered into his heart. Uh, Lord have mercy, but into his belly, or not into his heart, uh, but into his belly, uh, and goes out uh, into uh, the drought, uh, purging all meats. Uh. And then he said, here it goes, church, uh, in verse 20, uh, he said, uh, that which cometh out of the man uh, makes him uh, uncommon. Uh, for from within our hearts, Amen. Uh, and then Jesus goes down uh, the catalog uh, of raw material. Uh, now watch it here. Jeremiah tells us uh, in 17 uh, and 19, uh, Jeremiah says, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things. Uh, and uh, the heart is uh, desperately wicked. Uh, who can know it? Uh, oh, Lord, I wish I had somebody here. Now watch it here, church. Uh, the heart, uh, yeah, holds, uh, or is the warehouse for the raw material of sin. Uh, I wish I had somebody. Jesus, before I close it out, uh, goes through uh, this catalog uh, of raw materials. Uh, and these things are, uh, are within the storage of the heart. Now, Jesus is not talking about the physical heart. Can I go close this thing out? You see, yeah, doctors today, church, and uh, technology have developed uh, all sorts uh, of tools and instruments to look into the heart. Lord have mercy. They can do... Uh, 
an angioplastic. I think that's what it's called. Uh, thank you, baby. They can do, uh, yeah, EKGs. Uh, they can do MRIs. Uh, yeah, there are all sorts of X-ray uh, equipment uh, that allow uh, scientists to look into the heart. Uh, but I've never seen or heard a scientist uh, that looked in the heart uh, and saw fornication. Lord have mercy. Uh, I wish I had somebody. Uh, yeah, yeah, they can see uh, blockage. Uh, they can see uh, a fib. Uh, they can see uh, everything else. Uh, but they can't see evil thoughts. Uh, that's in the heart. Uh, I wish I had somebody. So Jesus here, yeah, church, uh, is talking about, uh, yeah, the raw materials uh, of sin. Uh, now, uh, from this catalog uh, of sin, uh, from this catalog of raw material, uh, is every sin uh, that's committed. Uh, now, you know what the Bible tells us? Uh, that uh, that uh, God cannot be tempted uh, Neither does God tempt men to sin. Uh, but it's the raw material that's already in your heart, Lord have mercy, that when uh, your lust is drawn away, uh, enticed uh, and drawn away. See, let me tell you something about enticement. Uh, enticement can only happen uh, if it's already there. Lord have mercy. You can't be enticed uh, if it's not there. See, so the raw material has to be there before it formulates into sin. Uh, can I go and preach church? Uh, watch it here. The raw materials. Uh, Jesus goes down uh, this catalog uh, of raw materials. Uh, if you notice something, church, uh, yeah, he says from, uh, yeah, within, uh, yeah, out of our hearts, men, uh, that proceed. Now watch all of these. The first classification uh, are in the plural. I wish y'all could follow me with this. Uh, he said evil thoughts. Uh, that's a lot of thoughts, Lord have mercy. He said adulteries. Uh, that's a lot of adulteries. Uh, fornications, murders, thieves, uh, covetousness, wickedness. Uh, and then he goes to single from the wall the way out. Uh, are y'all with me, church? Uh, see, the Bible tells us, I know that you're ready to go here. But the Bible says uh, Jesus gives us here, yeah, the raw materials of sin. Uh, let me go and work this thing. Uh, see, the raw materials that are listed here, yeah, are in the heart stored. Uh, yeah, where there is nothing but deceitfulness. Uh, but the mind works with the heart. Uh, yeah, the mind, y'all wish I had somebody, uh, manufactures the raw material. Uh, the mind grabs the raw material that's in the heart, uh, and the mind starts to work on it. Uh, and then uh, there is the language that expresses the thoughts that's in the mind, uh, and then the action of the body follows the language. I, I, I know I'm in the book here. You see, uh, until Eve opened her mouth. Lord have mercy. I wish to have somebody here. See, the thought was there, but when she opened her mouth and started conversing with the devil, and sin was conceived right there. The Bible says here that Jesus says that all these things are the raw materials. Yeah, Lord, uh, that makes up that of uh, sin. Uh, you remember Jesus told a man uh, that uh, if you commit adultery in your heart, uh, you've already committed adultery. Uh, yeah, if you think it uh, in your heart, uh, then you've already done it. Uh, see, that's why, yeah, he said, uh, man looks on the outward uh, but God sees the heart. See, God sees uh, the stuff uh, that's in your heart. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter how you dress it up. Uh, I wish I had somebody. Doesn't matter how you fix it up. Uh, 
Doesn't matter how you make it up. Uh, yeah, God sees what's in your heart. Uh, and you know us church folk, I'm, I'm trying to cut across the field. Uh, yeah, we sure know how to cover up some sin. I, I wish I had somebody. Yeah, we sure know how uh, to dress sin up uh, and to make sin uh, look pleasant. Uh, but I need to tell you that underneath uh, all that uh, adornment uh, is the ugliness uh, of sin. Uh, yeah, I want to grab this church uh, that inside uh, of you, uh, me and I, uh, are nothing but the ugliness of sin. Uh, Jesus said here yeah, that uh, this stuff uh, is in your heart. Uh, yeah, Lord. Uh, and again, uh, the doctors can't cut it out. Uh, Lord have mercy. Therapy can't get it out. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, the psychiatrist can't get it out. Uh, Mitch, the self-help books uh, can't get it out. Uh, this stuff uh, is in your heart. Uh, and we as mankind, uh, we have developed ways uh, to make it look pretty. But at the end of the day, sin is sin. Uh, and God sees sin. Uh, yeah, we can make it look right. Uh, by being politically correct. Uh, we can make it look right uh, by saying the right thing. Uh, we can make it look right uh, by experiencing cancer culture. But at the end of the day, uh, sin is sin. Uh, and the raw materials of sin, church, uh, are already in your heart. Uh, you see, uh, they were shipped uh, to your heart uh, on the day that Adam sinned. Uh, on the day uh, that Adam sinned, uh, by default, uh, you became uh, a business partner with Adam. Uh, and because uh, you were in partnership with Adam, uh, you receive uh, the same raw material as Adam. Uh, but I thank God uh, that God didn't just give us one Adam. I, I'm going to wait a minute on that. Uh, yeah, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to wait before I get too happy up here. Yeah, God uh, says here that all these things uh, are in your heart. Uh, and, uh, and so when I look at it uh, and I think about uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and that uh, Jesus died for your sins. Uh, in other words, understand the gospel here in that while uh, we were yet sinners. Uh, while you had this stuff in your heart, uh, Jesus still died for you. Uh, see, Nicodemus struggled with this, uh, and Nicodemus didn't quite understand it. Uh, Nicodemus said, uh, how can this come to be? Uh, do I have to enter into my mother's womb uh, a second time? Uh, but Jesus says, uh, you have to be born again. Uh, then I think I heard Paul says uh, that if any man, uh, woman, boy, a girl, uh, be in uh, Christ Jesus, uh, that he uh, is a new creature. And I think uh, I heard the Lord say, come on to me, uh, all ye that labor, and I, uh, heavy laden, uh, take my yoke upon thee uh, and learn of me. I heard the Lord say, oh, Lord, I wish I had a little voice today, uh, that my yoke is easy. Uh, and my burdens uh, are lighter. I heard the Lord say, uh, Oh Lord, that they uh, that wait uh, upon the Lord shall uh, renew their strength, uh, that they shall mount up uh, whole wings uh, like an eagle. Uh, and fly. I heard the Lord say, oh Lord, 
that my weapons are warfare, are not carnal, but mighty unto God, to the pulling down of strongholds. I heard the Lord say, oh, Lord, that they that wait upon the Lord shall, I feel like preaching a little bit, renew their strength, that they shall mount up on wings like an eagle and fly. Now watch it here in my heart. I have a multitude of raw materials of sin. But one day, Jesus looked at my raw material. One day, the Lord, may it be, saw our wicked way. One day, oh Lord, the Lord saw your sin and watch it here. When he went to Calvary, he became all of this. It was all on him at Calvary. Yeah, Lord. You look on Jesus uh, and you saw evil thoughts. Uh, at Calvary, uh, when you looked at Jesus, uh, you saw on him, uh, but not in him, uh, adultery. Uh, you saw on him, uh, but not in him, uh, wickedness. Uh, but this is what I love about it, uh, that he took, uh, yeah, uh, all of that stuff, uh, died the hill he took it down to the pits of hell and because there was no sin in him hell couldn't keep him somebody said oh lord what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus christ he died he died he died until the earth got nervous. He died until the soldiers said, Surely, 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 this must be the Son of God. Went down to hell, preached the revival, set the captives free. But on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, he stepped foot on resurrection soil. No more fornication, no more deceitfulness, no more lies. It all was buried in the grave. But when he came back, he said, all oh, power, all oh, power, all oh, oh, power, say yes, and he all right, say yes. And he all right, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. If you know the Lord took your sin to Calvary, if you know the Lord took your sin to the grave, you know the Lord rose with all power, saying that death can't conquer you. He said, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Oh, Lord. So every time sin try to come back, I tell the Lord, take the raw material 
out of my heart. So when temptation come, it'll find love. When temptation come, it'll find joy. When temptation come, it'll find peace. Because I got Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins, not some of our sins, but all, but all our sins he bad. Say yeah, say yes. I'm trying to mention, but when I think about myself on the road to hell, to mean to live it and not fit to die, but Jesus saw something in me that nobody else saw. Jesus saw something in you that nobody else saw. He said that you are a great person. You are a leader. Get that sin out of your heart. He said, I'll die for it. I'll take care of it. Because it's got you locked. It's got you in prison. But ain't he all, all right? I better hold myself, Holly. Give the Lord a praise, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. He's worthy. Come on, he's worthy. Aren't you tired of all that junk in your heart? Aren't you tired of trying to be somebody that you know God called you to be, but sin keeps holding you back? Give it to Jesus. Give it to the Lord. He'll bear it. Lord, have mercy. Come on, give the Lord a praise. He's worthy. Thank God today. Thank God today. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. He's powerful. He's strength. Time of need. Took the COVID shot Friday and couldn't tell you I tossed and turned all last night because it just it just made me jumpy and jittery. I'm glad I got the shot. I had to deal with some small, and I encourage you be healthy if you can take it. That's me personally. But I was praying this morning. I said, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to preach today. Breathing ain't right. Tired. But then I start thinking about everything that God has done for me. I start thinking about Jesus at Calvary and how he suffered, how he pushed. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. If there's someone today, virtually, even in this place that have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins. And you say, Pastor, I'm ready to get all this junk out of my heart. My heart is heavy and full of junk. That which I want to do good, I just can't. I need your grace. I need your mercy. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, I invite you today. And see, here's the thing. Wherever you are, you don't have to jump over pews, foaming at the mouth, none of that stuff. Just a peaceful, quiet acceptance of Jesus Christ and understanding his grace is extended to you. I heard Mitch kept saying this morning in his ex 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 expositional Hosea, Mitch kept saying, God loves 
the sinner. They just kept saying it. God loves the sinner. And that stuck with me this morning. And I said, whoa, God loves the sinner. You know, you hear it all the time, but then, whoa, that's powerful. God loves the sinner. Because you know what, church folk? We act like we don't like sinners. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, that's who we're supposed to be reaching out to. God loves sinners. God loves a sinner. And all I say to you today, if you have not accepted him, just simply with your heart, just pray this prayer. Father, I've sinned against you. Forgive me for my sins. Father, I say to you, amen. You are right. I'm a sinner. Save me this morning. My heart that's full of evil wants to accept you. You've got to understand this with salvation. With the heart. Salvation starts in the heart. With all that other junk there, salvation starts in the heart. And he'll save you. If you're here or if you're out there, just send us a message. We will get back to you. May God bless you and may God keep you. Just for a few more minutes, church, those that are in virtual, we're going to take some time to Koinonia to fellowship with the supper. And I'll give you instructions so that we may follow safe protocol. So if you just remain seated, we're going to partake of the supper. <laughs>